Good morning, students. I'm on cloud nine to meet you again after a long break. Hope you are all learned to live with Parana and see, children, how the situation has changed. Last year, you have been feeling bored to come to school, and uh, this year, now you feel bored to stay at home. The situation has changed. Very soon, we will get another change so that we will all come back to our school to have our regular studies. Yesterday, we have been celebrating this Independence Day. We must be independent, not be independent. We must be independent, not be independent. See, about that independence, actually, if you read history, it portrays something else other than what might have happened during that days. Louis Fisher, a writer, came to India to collect materials to write the biography of Mahatma Gandhi. And uh, in that article he has written what Mahatma Gandhi said about independence. Mahatma Gandhi wanted to get in independence for individuals, Indians. But what we got finally is, we got independence for our nation, not for the individual. And uh, Gandhi narrates in his autobiography that he wanted uh, in independence for the individual. He said, when a girl, when a woman walks through the road with the jewels on her body and reaches home mid at midnight safely, at that day, we get independence. Now we find that even one gram of gold on our body, with one gram of gold on our body, we could not walk through the streets even during daytime. Anyway, Gandhi was not at all happy about the way we, which we get independence. He aims for individual independence. And because of the political pass of the aggression for powers of our people, towards the end, the British people are forced to leave the country, handing over India in our hands. And there was a struggle, that is an internal problem here, and so they just partitioned India into India and Pakistan, and India was given, handed over into Jawaharlal Nehru, and uh, Pakistan was given to, in the hands of Muhammad Ali Jinnah. From that day onwards, the struggle started in Kashmir and Kargil. Even today, thousands of soldiers sacrificed their life to safeguard our borders. Anyway, we must be independent, not be in dependent. Right? Now, Vinoba, a famous philosopher, once asked his students, to do a work, to test. He gave a test to the students. And he gave a picture to the students and asked the student that the picture was torn into pieces and he asked the students to arrange it properly. The students tried their level best to arrange it. They could not do it. Finally, one student just arranged it correctly. Vinoba asked that particular child, how could he do it? How could he do it correctly? The answer given by that particular student is: see, at the back of the back of the picture, at the torn pieces, I could see the picture of a man, a human being. It is easy to arrange the human being, and automatically, when I arrange the human being correctly, the nation, the other side of the picture, we have, we have that nation it was arranged. So, for the betterment of a nation, for the development of a nation, man must be perfect. If the man is okay, automatically the nation will be okay. But if you, though we celebrated Independence Day, if you see the condition of our nation, everywhere corruption, evils, bribery. So, as students, you are the future of India. You are struggling hard in between benches and dust today. So, in future, you must try, try hard 
to just fill up the gaps that have been made in the present society, right? Okay. Now, today I am going to deal with a poem that cast by Edwin Mill. Before going into the poem, I must tell you something about this Edwin Mill. Edwin Mill was a, a Scottish writer, novelist, critic, translator, uh, playwright, all in one. See, if you take his uh, life history, if you read his life history, you could see that at the age of 14, he lost everyone in his family. Father, mother, two brothers, he lost everyone. Nobody to take care of. Just imagine at the age of 14. So he is forced to go to a factory to work. In the 18th and early 19th centuries, this uh, small children, child labor was there in England. It was a major problem there. And uh, this child, this uh, Edwin Muir was working in a factory. He underwent the tortures and torments in the hot, uh, uh, hotness of the factory and uh, automatically the experiences he has got through his life made him to express everything in the form of his writing. And so he wrote. So mostly his themes of his writings were death, disloyalty, loss, all these things. Right? And uh, his, um, and later in his life, this Edwin Muir has become the director of the British Council. See, just imagine from the level of working as a small boy, working in a factory, he has gone up to the level of the director of the British Council and uh, later he has become the professor of the Harvard University. And uh, this is one of his best uh, writing, The Castle. Do you know what is a castle? Castle is a large, very big building with high walls and it is a synonym of citadel, fort, castle. Don't pronounce the word as castle, it is castle. So these are castle, citadel, fort or one and the same. Can you name some of the forts or castles in India? Kolkanda Fort in Hyderabad, Red Fort in Delhi, then Jinch Fort in Jinch, that is near Vilupuram, and there is the present secretary of Tamil Nadu was once a fort, a citadel, that is St. George Fort. So it is a very vast building, very big building with, uh, with high walls, moors. It is a royal residence where the people stay there to defend the country, defend the, to defend the people, people reside there. Mostly it is related to the royalty. Right. Now, the, now let me tell you about the what? Hope you understood something about Edwin Muir. And the castle is a poem in which the narrator, the narrator was also one of the soldiers who stayed there in the castle. He was also one among the soldiers who was there inside the castle and he is narrating this. It is a monologue. It is a monologue. And uh, the theme of the poem is the struggle between good and evil. The struggle between good and evil. The nature of human destiny. We, are, we cannot predict our destiny. The nature of how the situation is getting changed. Destructiveness of time. These are all the themes that, that uh, he has dealt with in his poem, the poem, the castle. Now, let us read the poem and I will explain it. Right. The poem, The Castle by Edwin Mew. 
What thoughts come to your mind when you think about a castle? Moat, huge buildings, soldiers, weapons, throne, architecture, riches, all these things. Have you ever visited a fort or a castle? Right. Fill in the blanks following empty boxes. Saint George Fort. I told you it was the it is the present secretariat. It is in Chennai. Jinch Fort. It is in near Vilapuram and uh, in between the Chennai area. It is in Jinch. We will call it in as Chinchi Fort. Chinchi Fort. Golconda Fort in Hyderabad. Red Fort in Delhi. Right. Number four. All through that summer at ease we lay. And daily from the turret wall, we watch the moors in the hay, and the enemy half a mile away, they seem no threat to us at all. Here in the first paragraph, the poet describes the castle and how they were there in the castle. All through the summer, throughout the summer season, at ease, very happily, very comfortably, very easily, we lay, we stayed in the castle. Throughout the summer season, we have no threat at all. We were there staying very relaxedly. We were stress free in the castle. And daily, what were we doing there? And daily from the turret wall, we watched the moors in the hay. And daily from the turret wall, turret wall is a small tower like thing at the top of the castle if you stand there see in that picture you could see some turret there where they could see the whole area what is happening around them whether enemies are coming what the people are doing there in the lawns and the, all these bafflements all these things they could see from the turret so daily we will go to the turret wall and watch us what is happening around us. But we were not tensed, we were relaxed, we stayed very happily in the, in the castle. Then as we were staying there, what were we doing? We watched the moors in the hay. Moors, moors is a word which means one who trim grass and level the ground. That is the workers in the lawns. We watched how they were doing the work. And the enemy half a mile away. And from there we could watch the enemy's arrival there. And we were very sure that there was no enemies around half a mile. In half mile locality area, there is no enemy's threat at all. So we were relaxed and stress free. And we were there in the castle. They seemed no threat to us at all. So there was no problem at all in the castle. We were safe doing our work sincerely, watching over the castle and at the same time uh, listening what is happening around us. Hope you understood the first paragraph of the poem. Now the rhyme scheme of the first paragraph, can you tell me students? Lay, wall, hay, away, all. Lay, hay, away, a, a, a. Wall, all, b, b. Right? Now shall we proceed to the next paragraph? Once more I am reading it and proceed. All through that summer at ease we lay, and daily from the turret wall we watch the moors in the hay, and the enemy half a mile away. They seem no threat to us at all. Next answer. For what we thought had we to fear with our arms and provender load on load, our towering battlements tack on tack, and friendly allies drawing near on every leafy summer road. Can you guess what it is? For what we thought we had to fear, why should we get frightened of? In the first paragraph, he said that they are stress free, relaxed. They were joyfully staying in the castle. Now he asked the question, why should we get 
stressed why should we get frightened of what is the reason for it there is no need at all with our arms and provender because we have no fear at all because we have arms sufficient weapons with us we have sufficient uh, weapons with us to face the enemies and provender provender your means food we have loads and loads of weapons and food to stay safely in the in the citadel our towering battlements tower on tower and friendly allies drawing near on every leafy summer road our towering battlements towering battlements means see if you see that picture it is given at that side you could see one tower like thing through which they can stay there the soldiers can stay there and shoot at the enemies with a there is a opening like thing to shoot the enemies so our towering battlements tower on tower so there are plenty of battlements in that one above the other one above the other we could see plenty of battlements so even if there are some enemies we could just hide ourselves from inside and shoot at them so we have no tension at all and moreover more than that we have enough food we have enough weapons and more than that and friendly allies drawing near all the neighboring countries all the neighboring supporting people are with us to support us in case of our danger on every leafy summer road everywhere here and there we have people to support us so there is no need to get frightened of at all in that castle so here he was just describing about the the conditions situation in which the soldiers are put in this castle so the second paragraph hope you understood and the, the line scheme of it is fear tire near a a a load road b b so the line scheme is a b a a b now shall we proceed to the next paragraph right once more i'm reading this for what we thought had we to fear with our arms and provender load on load our towering battlement star on tar and friendly allies drawing near on every leafy summer road next paragraph our gates were strong our walls were thick smooth and high no man could win a foot hold there no clever trick could take us dead or quick only a bird could have got him see in the third paragraph he describes the physical strength of the citadel he just tells us about the physical strength of the citadel the physical strength of the citadel the citadel was very strong very strong that is what he is explaining in this paragraph our gates were strong i hope there is no need for explanation we have strong gates our walls were thick we have thick walls so there is no fear at all even if they shoot it will never peep inside the castle smooth and high the walls of us are smooth what is the benefit of having a smooth wall in a um, castle see if it is projecting or protruding something like that easily people the enemies can climb over the walls and enter inside the castle so since the walls are very smooth no one can enter if they climb they will slip and high moreover it is not only smooth it is very high also so no man could win no man can enter inside the castle so physical strength of the castle is being stressed by the other a foot hold there no clever trick whatever trick the enemies undergo even if they 
take some tricks or some shortcuts or hook or crook or whatever it is, they cannot enter and hold a position inside the castle. Could take us dead or quick. Quick means, in olden English it means alive. So they cannot, even if we die, they cannot come and take us. Even if we are alive, they cannot enter. The meaning of it is, there is no possibility of our enemies to enter in the castle. Only a bird could have got it. Except a bird, nobody can enter the castle. There is possibility of a bird through some holes or something. The bird may come and go, but there is no other possibility. So we are very safe inside the castle. We are very confident of the strength of the castle. We are less staying easily, happily, but at the same time, we were doing our duty loyally, just in the castle. Right the next, this uh, rhyme scheme of this is tick, trick, quick, win, in. A, B, A, A, B. Hope you understood the first three paragraphs. Any doubt, students? Now, from the next paragraph onwards, in the narration, there is a slight change. You could see some. So far, he has been narrating and he has been giving, the, telling us that it is, we are very safe and the castle is also very safe. Next paragraph, what could they offer us for bait? Our captain was brave and we were true. See, nobody can cheat us by giving bait. Bait is something like a bribe. bribe. What would they offer us for bait? Because they cannot cheat us. They cannot convince us, console us by, by giving some baits. That is, a bait is a thing which is intended to give to someone to do something. So they cannot bribe us. They cannot convince us to do that uh, disloyal activity because our captain was brave. Captain, the commander of the soldier. Our captain was very strong. So, there is no need to frighten off at all. Even if somebody gives some bait, our captain will never accept it. And we were also loyal to our duty. We were sincere to the nation. We have been faithful to our duty. So, no threat can cheat us. But, so from this line, the next line onwards, there is a change. There was a little private gate. But in one corner of the citadel, there was a small, small gate. Private gate. A yeah, little wicked, wicked gate. A yeah, small, evil or harmful small gate. A small gate was there in one corner of the citadel. Castle. The vision warder let them through. There was a god, an old wizard means old god, watching over that small gate. He, this god, just let the enemies inside the castle. So might have got some bribery, maybe some gold or money or whatever it is. He just allowed the, allowed the enemies inside the castle. Though the castle is physically strong, though we have a very good eye on the castle, because of the betrayal of a small ward, the whole thing got collapsed. Oh, then our maze of tunnel stone grew thin and treacherous as air. The castle was lost without a groan. The famous citadel overthrown. And all its secret galleries were. So the enemies, they just entered the castle. And so far, if we enter through one way, we do not know through which way we have to come out. Because in a castle, there will be so many confused paths. Right? In our district, there was a place by name near Thakkarai, Padmanabharam Palace. So many of you might have seen. 
See there, if you enter in olden days, but now most of the things were just transferred to that uh, drawing room and uh, now it is an empty palace like. But there was a tunnel from here, if you walk, the enemies will, yes, the, the, the king and queen will escape through the tunnel and reaches the Padmanadhavaram palace in, in Trivandrum if some enemies attack the palace. So just like that, there are some confused paths inside the, inside the castle. But all these paths were easily overcome by the, by the enemies because then our maze, our confusing paths, our paths of tunneled stone grew thin and treacherous as air. So it is disloyal. They were all crying, lament, just disloyal, grew thin and treacherous. So everyone could go through the castle. They can walk easily through the castle. They were familiar with the path. All the confused paths all got collapsed. And all its secret galleries there. All the precious things, the bed chambers, the luxuries, the treasures, the gold, the money, everything was emptied by the, by the enemies. Now our citadel, our castle is empty, bare, without anything. Only the outer frame is there. So, in this paragraph, Edwin Muir tells us that physically, though the citadel is very strong, because of the betrayal of one of the order, the whole thing got collapsed. We must be loyal to our duty. We must be loyal to our work. That is what is being stressed. Now, the last paragraph. Here also the rhyme scheme is stone, grown, thrown, a, B, A, B, A, A, B. The last part. How can this shameful tale be told? I will maintain until my death. We could do nothing being sold. Our only enemy was gold. And we had no arms to fight it. The last paragraph. How can this shameful tale be told? Tale, story. Shameful tale, disgraceful story. What is the disgraceful story referred to here? The betrayal of the order. One among the group, one among the person who is supposed to watch, take care of the castle, just betrayed it. So it is a shameful tale. So the soldier, the narrator, doesn't want to tell the story, the shameful to story to anyone because it is one among, it is a battle with themselves. How can this shameful tale be told? How can he say this disgraceful story to anyone? I will maintain until my death. I will, I believe, I will keep it as a secret till the end of my death. It is because it is an act of disloyalty. I will never reveal this secret to anyone because if I reveal it, it is a shameful thing to me also. We could do nothing being sold. So there is no other go other than being, we were being sold. We will be sold because they will take us along with them. We will be under the custody of this enemies. So we cannot do anything except being sold. Our only enemy was gold. Now we have, we are ready to face our enemies with weapons and other things which is needed. But we have no weapon to fight with gold. Hope you understand the line. We have enough weapons to fight our, with our enemies, but we have no weapons to fight with gold, money. Because of after getting this bribery, bribe from the from the enemies, the warder has just revealed the revealed the opened the door. So we cannot fight against it. We do not know to fight with gold. So automatically we are struggling. 
we have to meet with failure. And we have no arms to fight with it. We have no weapons to fight with gold. The brave soldiers had no weapon to fight human greed for money and gold. Hope you understood the poem. It's a very good thing. This is what is happening in our society also. There are people who are supposed to take care of it, but they are just betraying the situation and the whole thing comes to a, comes to a collapse. And uh, as students, in future, you must fight against all these evils and get a, try to build up a better India. Right? So the exercise part of it, we'll see tomorrow. In the next class, hope you might have got the timetable. Right.